Do you know when you're on the beach and there's this big wave coming and it's just falling right on top of you and then you, there's a mixture of you and ocean and sand and just a big soup of you and ocean and sand? If this happens to you, you probably know what it is to swallow a lot of seawater. Did you know that when you swallow seawater, you are actually ingesting millions of microorganisms? First of all, what are microorganisms? Microorganism is a very broad concept to define any living thing which is so small that you cannot see without the aid of a tool such as a microscope. So you could not see it with the naked eye. There are many types of microorganisms. It's protozoans, fungi, archaea, some algae, even mini animals, and of course our well-known bacteria. Some people also argue that viruses should be included in this group. However, there's an ongoing discussion whether viruses can be considered living beings or not, but I will not go into detail about that right now. Even if you have not heard of all these names I've just enumerated, you have probably heard of bacteria. Well, this is very normal. Bacteria are very important in our ecosystems and maintaining our climate and creating our climate, and of course, in our body. Maybe the reason why you have heard of it is also because they are responsible for all those nasty diseases that mo many of us know, like tuberculosis, tetanus, syphilis, gonorrhea, a plague, so many, many more. But it is true that they are responsible for a lot of all these nasty diseases, but it is also true that they are very important for the functioning of our body. Did you know that at least half of the cells of the human body are bacteria? We are half bacteria, half human. And it is even probable that we have more bacterial cells in our body than human cells. Say what? Scientists estimate that a reference man of 30, 70 kilos between 20 and 30 years old with 1.7 meters height will have around 30 trillion human cells as compared to 39 trillion cells of bacteria, bacterial cells. Of course, this might change depending on the person, depending on the body, depending on the diet, well, many, many things. Anyways, it is estimated at least half of our cells are bacterial. That's what you have to keep in mind. Let's go back to you swallowing seawater. Of course, the amount of microorganisms that you ingest when you swallow seawater will depend first of all of how much seawater you ingest and also a bit where which seawater because the number of microorganisms varies a bit depending where you are however there is an estimation that there are around 1 million cells per milliliter in surface seawater so just to give you an idea this little tube here has 15 milliliters of seawater so in this little tube there are 90 million cells it's a lot and now Back to bacteria, it's estimated that there are around 10 to the 29 bacteria in the whole oceans. Now here's the thing, the surface area of all bacteria in the ocean put together is bigger than the surface of our planet. At least 25 times. Let me explain to you this a bit better. Let's imagine this is a bacteria, just millions of times bigger. The surface area is the kind of the peel that is surrounding the, in this case, my bacteria. So if I were to peel it off, so I have the inside of the bacteria and here I have the surface area of the bacteria. Well, if we have a sphere, the surface area would look a bit different than this. It would look like this. However, I will now, for, that, for my example, I will use this. If you were to put all of these surfaces of all bacteria in the ocean together, you would get an, an area that is bigger than the area of the planet Earth. If you don't believe me, let's go to the math board. There are many different types of microorganisms in the ocean, with different shapes and with different sizes. Normally bacteria range from 0.2 to 100 micrometers of diameter or of length, depending on their shape. However, it is unclear what is the distribution of the different sizes and different shapes of bacteria in the ocean. For our calculations now, we will use the bacteria with the smallest surface area possible, which is a sphere with 0.2 micrometers of diameter. So keep in mind that every calculation we do from now on is actually an underestimation of the real value. Now that we have our bacteria and we know its diameter, we can calculate its area using the formula to calculate the area of spheres. We have intermission. Who's this guy? This is pi. Pi is the ratio between the circumference and the diameter of a circle. It is an irrational number, which means it never repeats itself and it never, ever, ever ends. Since it's very difficult to use a never-ending number for our calculations, we will just use 3.14, which is accurate enough for what I want to show you. Okay, so now that we know what pi is and what value it has, we can continue with our calculations. We know the r, which is the radius, which is equivalent to half of the diameter, and from there we can start calculating the total area 
of one bacteria, which is 0.1256 square micrometers. We know that in the world's ocean, there are around 10 to the 29 bacteria in total. So if we multiply the surface area of one bacteria by the total number of bacteria in the ocean, we will get the surface area of all bacteria in the ocean combined which is approximately 12.5 times 10 to the 9 square kilometers or 7.76 times 10 to the 9 square miles. We know that the surface area of planet Earth is 0.5 times 10 to the 9 square kilometers or 0.32 times 10 to the 9 square miles. If we compare this value to the combination of the surface area of all the bacteria in the ocean that we've just calculated, we will see that the surface area of the Earth is 25 times smaller than all the bacteria combined. Don't forget that this value is actually an underestimation since not all bacteria in the ocean are as small as the one we used for these calculations. It is possible that the surface of the Earth is around hundreds of times smaller than the one of the combined surface areas of all bacteria in the ocean. So there are a lot of these little guys, and in these calculations I even only used bacteria, I'm not only counting other microorganisms, and I'm also not counting other microorganisms that live outside the ocean, even though they are so abundant and we are totally aware of how important they are to everything to our health, to our ecosystems, to our climate. There is still so much which is not known and that every time we look a bit deeper we find something new, something amazing, sometimes terrifying and it's an, still an, a, a, an ongoing discovery process. So if you think that humans rule the world, think again. If these microorganisms were to combine and revolt against human race, they would totally kick our asses. So anyways, this was it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave in the comments below whether you liked it or not. Don't forget to share and to subscribe if you want to see more videos. Ocean people, thank you so much for watching and see you the next time.